And Mr. McClendon, do you understand why she fusses at you? <laughs> yeah. do, do you get it? Because you're half ridiculous all the time. Do you think you were too young to get married? Do you really think you were ready? Man, I was... This is second marriage. Oh, come on, you made that up. <laughs> no, this, this, is, this is his second marriage. It is, Your Honor. She's the judge who gives rules on the law and life. She's intense with common sense. She's Judge Lynn Toller on Divorce Court, where real couples deal with real life. Stephanie and Anthony have been married for three years and find themselves at a crossroads. Stephanie says she is fed up with Anthony's cheating and needs him to step up and take charge or get stepping. I am just sick and tired of the cheating. Stephanie had come in drunk and she was like, oh, please help me. And it'd be like six o'clock in the morning. Can Anthony convince Stephanie that he is ready to grow up and provide for their family? Or will this relationship be finished for good? Today on Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Stephanie McClendon and Anthony McClendon. The two of you have been married for three years. Mrs. McClendon, you are out. It's a wrap. It's over for it's you. Mr. McClendon, you'll do anything in the world to save this marriage. Yes. With us today, we also have Janie Hill. Yes. You have some information with respect to what's going on here, and I will talk to you later. If we are not able to get this marriage turned in a way that we think it might progress, uh, and you do want to continue on towards a divorce, there are some financial matters that you want me to resolve, and I will, in fact, uh, do that uh, at the end of the case. Before we get there, however, I'm going to start with you, Mrs. McClendon. Why do you believe this relationship <laughs> is over? I am just sick and tired of the cheating. The Internet cheating, for an example, I went on Facebook on the phone, his account was open, and I saw that he was trying to get with one of my friends that I've known for like 10 years. Now, when you say get with, what kind of communications were they having? Um, he was asking her to come and pick him up. He was telling her that he had a big penis. He was telling her that, you know, he wanted to do sexual favors for her. Um, so I was just, I was just done. I was... Mr. McClendon, <laughs> were you on Facebook? Telling somebody about the size of your equipment. He sure was. He sure yes, was. Um, now, yeah. Mr. McClendon, let's just forget the fact that you're married for a right. hot second. 26 years old, really? Do you think that's necessary? I mean, that schoolyard let me show you behavior. Yeah. Don't right. you think? Yes. What was on your mind? I did ask her, um, her friend to give me a ride to work. And, you know, me and, because me and Stephanie was, we weren't, you know, you weren't, get, you weren't getting along. You weren't getting along. You asked this person for a ride but to work, and the next thing you know, you're telling her how internet. big your situation is. Is this what you're telling me? <laughs> right. <laughs> All righty then, Mrs. Things? McClendon, tell me more about the internet That's cheating and the life. Example. Another example is one day I pick up the phone, I'm like, hello, it's this girl asking to speak to my husband. And so then later on, I found out that she was around my kids. She had came to my house. Mr. Right. Hall? It's a lot going were on. Were you having a relationship with someone else to the extent that this she what, was around your, this what happened your children? Your I had lost a lot of trust into my wife. And I started, you know, we weren't, getting, we weren't excuses, getting along. But, mm -hmm. And I was just like, I'm okay, just not if you're not, you know, like her drinking. You know, she would go out and just just be drinking. I stay home with the kids. I cook. I, you know, I clean. He drove me to drinking. You know, just hear the stuff I told you. <laughs> so, so, Mr. McClendon, I need a drink. You're, sure. saying, you're saying you two didn't have a, an active, meaningful relationship because she was drinking and carrying right. on with she was the drinking. Time. And you know, I was and you kids didn't feel careful. Miss Hall, come forward, please. I'm giving an opportunity. Oh, wow. oh you look like twins in here, like a like a <laughs> oh, like wow. a like a singing group or something. <laughs> but go ahead. Now, Miss Hall, what do you know about the state of their relationship and what each one of them is doing? That's not true. Stephanie and Anthony have great times. 
they have times when we're all together and they they dance all night. Nobody else is dancing, but they enjoy each other. And it's really, it, it's cute. But Anthony has been caught, you know, socializing, chatting, texting, you know, and, and my cousin's a sole breadwinner for them. You know, so I feel like it's totally unfair. Like, he, I don't care how bored he is. He needs to respect her and her kids. And, and take care of home. There's no time to talk to other girls on the phone or on Facebook. How does she know? What, 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 <laughs> Mr. McClendon, let me... It's you know, hang, okay. on, hang on, hang on, hang on, go ahead. She does work a lot. She does work a lot. But I also get the kids ready for school. Mm -hmm. There was times when Stephanie had drunk, and I had to... She come in drunk, and she was like, oh, please help me. And it'd be like <laughs> 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> then she'd be throwing up. I got to get up. I've been with the kids all day. I done put them in bed, fed them and everything. And she was like, oh, I'm, oh, I'm so drunk. Then she'd come in sometimes and cuss me out. And Can I talk to me about the liquor? Because he I, seems to think to you will fall down liquor. drunk. OK, if I'm going out, my family, we're a close family. And I would ask him, do you mind keeping the kids for a couple hours so I can go out? Uh -huh. Now, one time, yes, I did come back at 6 or 7 in the morning, because that's how we party. You know, but he was okay now, with it. Now, and Ms. Hall, are you part of that party? I am part yeah. of that party. We are first cousins. Because I, uh -huh. I didn't want to drink and drive. I'm not going to but that's that one time, and you agree to me going is not, out. It's not obsessive now, like how that. O now, how often do you guys roll like that? Every week. We every, every week. week. <laughs> every week. Every week. Maybe once or twice on the uh, weekend. The weekend. <laughs> every week. <laughs> when divorce court continues, Anthony admits to being unfaithful to his wife. But is Stephanie a cheater, too? Was the person on the other end of the phone a male friend with whom you were having an inappropriate relationship? Is your spouse ready to walk out the door, but you want to try and save your marriage? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222. Or visit our website at divorcecourt.com or become a fan at facebook.com slash divorce court. Divorce Court is back with the case of Stephanie McClendon, who wants out of her marriage because she is convinced her husband is a cheater. But let's find out if Stephanie has been unfaithful too. She was talking, you know, to this guy that was real secretive. Ms. McClendon, my understanding is you claim that he tried to get you fired yes, once. Yes, ma'am. Explain sure that to me. Um, I was at work. We had gotten to it over something I really can't remember because it's been so many issues. He called my supervisor and told him I was taking care of this elderly lady for like two years. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, me and her were really close. He called and told them that I forced her into one of the company vehicles and that I physically hurt her. And with me being at my job for so long, I mean, I had to call my boss and explain to her that, you know, we tripping again and... And he just he did that, had nothing he, to do with anything? Exactly. Mr. McClendon, did you call her job and, and, and accuse her of doing something inappropriate with one of her clients? Yeah, um, I was very angry and upset. I was what upset. were you angry about? I was upset and angry because she was like, we got into it, and she said, I'm going to my brother's house to go be with them. And she didn't want me to come. You know, she didn't want me to come. She didn't want me to be around because we got into it. We weren't seeing yeah. eye to eye. And she wanted some time she away. Wanted some, I guess she wanted so some time left. herself. So I'm and, thinking. And your response to that was get her fired? Yeah, I was being, you know, real ridiculous. childish. Ridiculous. Re ridiculous. Yeah, yes. I mean, just, just straight up ridiculous. Because yes. that's, that's cutting your own throat because she keeps the roof over your head. Right. We got that all cleared yes. up? Yes. We, we won't be doing be that out. anymore, but, right? Right. But, Your Honor, we are gonna be I also out. have a job and I do go to school. And I know Stephanie is the primary breadwinner because she makes, you know, a lot of hours. Right. He has a job now. He doesn't keep a job. Now, Ms. Hall? <laughs> I'm sorry. That's because I left. Because I oh, left. that's right. You've been separated for a couple of weeks. Because mm -hmm. you, you, you broke I just, camp. I was just fed up. And, I'm, but, and I wanted okay. to tell you about another situation. Why, why only now? It seems to me that you only got a job once she left. Is no, that true? No, 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 no. I always... I had plenty of jobs. I always... You know, I have we, plenty of jobs. You know, that's not a good thing. Right. When you have a whole lot, it means you're losing right. a lot you of jobs. Job, and you're jump, jumping, job, jump, jumping job, is not right. a good thing. Yeah. Why do you job jump? Do, are you not a good employee? No, that's not it. It's because, you know, sometimes we, I get up late, you know, because I done been with the family and the kids. Let, let me tell you something about that. That's be, not being a good employee. Right. When you're late, that's not right. a good employee. That's why right. you get fired. Right. All right? Right. Okay. Uh, and I also, you know, I have another thing. My wife, 
actually, when we was not getting along, she was talking, you know, to this guy that was real secretive. She was, you know, it was one particular day that she had walked outside. She held the phone like this on the side of her <laughs> where I couldn't see it. So she was like, dang, can I get some privacy? I need some time to hard. myself. I can't mm -hmm. even talk on my phone. See, but see. I... Now, did you have a man on the side? Was it a conversation you didn't want him to hear? She laughing. That's no. why she, she knew who it was. I'm laughing because. Yeah, she know. She know. I cannot, I can't never have a conversation on the phone. I mean, answer he the question. sitting right there. Answer the question. No. You ain't gonna answer the question? I, I now, just Mr. McClendon, no. I can hang, handle this all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> really, okay. I can. Okay. <laughs> Was the person on the other end of the phone a male friend with whom you were having an inappropriate relationship? No. But it was a he. It was a he. And it's but... not a conversation you would have had with him in front of him, correct? Yeah. Yeah, you I, had to think about I, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, 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 that was the thing. Yeah. I but, but I know it, what's it wasn't happened. No, it you... wasn't anything like that, you know what I'm saying? It, it wasn't nothing like that. When Divorce Court continues, Stephanie blames Anthony for the demise of their marriage, but is she the one to blame? You say she's verbally abusive to you. She just called me on my name, and she just, like, belittled me. You know, she would just get on me about every little thing. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and follow us on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court returns with the case of Anthony McClendon, who wants to save his three-year-old marriage, but will he have to change if Stephanie agrees to take him back? Anthony has a horrible temper. I wake up to glass shatter. He's throwing Broke things. Oh, my door. God. Stephanie, that's Stephanie's like, uh -huh. stop, stop. You say she's verbally abusive to you. Stephanie would just, uh -huh. like, she just call me, like, call me on my name, and she just, like, belittle me. You know, I want to keep the, I want the house clean, keep the house clean. You know, she would just get on me about every little thing. He's got the well, temper. He you... breaks things and everything. I can't believe so he's why calling would my you cousin need... abusive. Mrs. Oh, Omar, I might as well have you come on back up because you <laughs> oh, were going wow. to insist on talk. intruding in the conversation. <laughs> so, so let me let you say what you need to say. What, what were you going to say? Anthony has a horrible temper. Right. When things don't go his way, one night, I went over to their house because I was having an argument with my own boyfriend. Stephanie said, fine, lay on my couch, whatever. I wake up to glass shatter. He's throwing Broke things. Oh, door. my God. Stephanie, that was, Stephanie's like, uh -huh. stop, stop. We're only going to have to replace that. Stop throwing things. Are you he, serious? He, ha he's, he has yeah, a crazy temper. Time. Like, now, now, Mr. McClendon, oh, tell me the wow. truth. Do you throw stuff around when you get angry? I did. I, I had did, you know, broke a whole bunch of stuff. You know, he breaks see, stuff. No, 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 wait a minute. He breaks stuff. I was breaking she stuff. Stuff. She, right, no, but no, she wasn't Mr. there. Mr. work with me here. here. Work with me, because I'm just fascinated. Yeah. This woman sat up there and told a story about you breaking That's stuff. That's probably what she told her. And I was said, there. You're lying, you're lying. When, when did I be? And then you tell me, yeah, I broke some stuff. Yeah, yeah. no, I did. <laughs> no, I did. After a minute, he doesn't keep a job. I mean, I right don't get it. Mr. McClendon. Oh, wow. Mr. McClendon, Mr. McClendon, Mr. McClendon. Do you understand why she fusses at you? Yeah. Do, do you get it? Because, yeah. because you're half ridiculous all the time. <laughs> I mean, it, that's what it is. You're even, you know, even what you say here to me doesn't make any sense. From one sentence to another, it does, it, they don't connect. There's no segue. There's just, oh, I said this and then I said that. Um, do you think you were too young to get married? Do you really think you were ready? I mean, I was... This is second marriage. Oh, come on, you made that up. I was gonna say that. <laughs> no, this is, this is his second marriage. It is, Yana. Well, you're 26 years old, right? Yeah, I'm 26. And this is your second marriage? <laughs> yes. How yeah. old were you when you got married the first time? I was 19, but I was real, real, like, shh, I wasn't even ready at that time. Well, you're not ready now. <laughs> yeah, I, I know you weren't ready <laughs> seven years ago. <laughs> you want to save this marriage, right? Yeah, I mean, I do whatever it takes. No, 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 no. I'll do whatever it takes. Don't tell me that. <laughs> that, that. That makes no sense. That's not helpful. I want you to give me some specifics. What will you do when you leave here in order to save your marriage? Or do you not what have any idea? What can he do? What can he do? Do you have any idea? 
Yes, I do. And I want to, I change my ways the way I've been acting. Talk to her, tell her. I change my ways. You, I have heard that a thousand times. And, you That's know, I'll all, be more I mean, responsible. Sound like a, a recording. And I'll stay off, you know, the Facebook thing. I'm serious from the bottom of my heart, I will. Why don't you shut your page down? Can we go well, forward we and tried shut that your page before down? Too. Oh, you tried that? Yes. And he just yes. put another one back up? Put it back up. Open it back no, up. No, I did. I ended up shutting it down. But like when I got, you know, get mad, I, you know, pull it back up. When divorce court continues, what does Judge Lynn say to bring Stephanie to tears? Divorce Court returns with the case of Stephanie and Anthony McClendon, who have been separated for a month and are seeking a divorce after three years of marriage. Here's where we are. Now, Ms. Hall, sit down and, and, and be quiet this time. <laughs> Don't say anything else. Okay, Judge. this thing is over. Okay. Ms. McClendon, I like to save marriages I can, but he's not ready. He's, you know, he's gonna say what he needs to say to get what he wants, which is back in the house with you. Mm -hmm. I think he, he, he's with women because they take care of him. I don't think he's a, quite okay on his own. And, and, and you Can't hold function. down the fort, and he can be a little kid because he's on your time, he's on your dime, he's in your house, and he can be a kid. And I don't think he's ready. What I think doesn't mean you two can't be together, mm -hmm. but you can't be together right now. He's got some growing up to do. He's got to earn his way back in the house. And that's not a phone call. That's not letters. That's not a rose. What it is is usually he needs to have a job six, seven, eight months. He needs to, you know, be consistent with you. Mm -hmm. Come over and you can have two, three months go by without an argument, all, all of that. And, and until you can do that, he doesn't need to be back in the house. Mm -hmm. you, you with me on that one? And I know you love it, and I know you're gonna miss him, but you're doing the best thing for the both of you is to require him to grow up, because people will do as little as you let them, especially if they're not responsible. Mr. McClendon, you got a whole lot of showing up to do. You have showed up tacky, wrong, sad, tired, loose, weak, and undone. <laughs> You need to have a whole lot of things fixed. Tell me about this camera that it came up missing and you want me to have him reimburse you for. Yeah, so we got into it once again. Um, and he would do silly stuff like that, so I know that he did. You know, I had moved from another place I was staying at and I had over 2,000 pictures on that camera. We got into an argument, you know, next thing I know, two days later, my camera is gone. Okay. Did you take the camera, Mr. McClendon? Somebody was standing with us watching our kids and the camera was missing. I'm not gonna take anything. Do you believe in Mrs. McClendon? I'm not gonna take anything from you. I don't know what to believe with, with yeah, you know, I don't know what to believe either. It, when it, I don't know what to believe, the plaintiff can't, can't recover. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's worth it for you anyway. I think, I think what you need to do what you need to do. You have to fix who you talk to, where you go, what you do, your, 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 your thoughts about your job and responsibility. Take some responsibility off of her shoulders. Leave the other women alone. There has to be some self-restraint in your game. Right, but and I And don't still... you take him back, back until he gets it done. Mr. McClendon, do you think you can handle that? Yeah, I, I love Stephanie. That, I love that, her. Love I... is a wonderful thing, yeah. but if you don't do anything to back it up, it's right. Right. show it. I yeah, mean, it's absolutely right. Right. meaning. You're right, you're right. You're right. <laughs> you know, I can say I love you and just hit you all up in the head with a hammer. Right. What good does it do? Right. And every time you don't bring home money, every time you see another woman, every time you get on that Facebook, every time you do, that's whooping her, just whooping her. And you can't, but I love you, baby, but I love you. It doesn't work yeah, out, you're right, okay? You're right, you're right, you're right. You hear me? I hear you, I hear There you. will be no recovery in this matter. It is so ordered. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. Judge Toller's straight talk brought Anthony to tears in the green room after the show. However, as difficult as it was for Anthony to hear, the judge's criticism seems to have strengthened his marriage to Stephanie. Anthony has been holding down a job and getting to work on time, and he has been much better with the kids. Stephanie says that if things continue this way, she and Anthony will be able to save their marriage. <laughs>